Thank you. Um, so before I tell you what a periodic modular form is, uh, um, let me tell you what a modular form is. So I'm going to take k an integer. I'm going to take m some some positive integer, and then a modular form. weight k and level n simplicity is it's a holomorphic function on the complex of the half plane um, satisfying the following some functional equation so f of a z plus b over c z plus d is equal to c z plus d to the k of f of z for z in the upper half plane and, and matri matrices in SL2 z such that um, such that n divides and uh, and d is congruent to one modulo n plus <coughs> plus an extra growth condition that I'm not going to I'm not going to specify. So. so this gives me a. These functions form form a vector space, a C vector space, which is finite dimensional. <coughs> and on this vector space, one can define certain linear operators, uh, which I'll use, which I'll call TL for L a prime. Um, And these are these are simultaneously diagonalizable, and they all commute with each other. So, if f is a modular form, then if you plug in the matrix one one zero one, you'll find that f is one periodic. So, in particular, has a Fourier expansion. Q here is e to the two pi i z, um, which, thanks to the growth condition doesn't have any negative powers of Q. So um, so I said that these were, simulta these were simultaneously diagonalizable. So if I have such a simultaneous eigenvector, then I can always normalize it so that the first Fourier coefficient is is one, and then the link between the Fourier expansion and the eigenvalues is that the L Fourier coefficient is simply is simply the uh, the TL eigenvalue. So, so I'm going to call such such gadgets eigen eigenforms. Sorry. I mean, I don't have to, but. I want to try to be a little bit unclear about exactly um, which, which heck operates I should then. But, um, uh, and moreover, this turns out to be an algebraic number. So in particular, I can define some kind of um, there, there's sort of a natural QL bar, uh, sorry, Q bar st structure on this vector space, which is simply w what you get by taking the span of, of these eigenforms.
right, so, so these these gadgets are arithmetically interesting, for maybe primarily because of the following th following theorem, following very old theorem due to Kummer, which says that if I, if I take a prime p, then p doesn't divide the class number of the field you get by joining the the p um, the p through its unity to q. If and only if p doesn't divide the numerator, so these these guys are rational numbers. If and only if p doesn't divide the numerator of the b case for k going from two to p to p minus three. So. So why do you want to study? Why do you want to study, say, the, the p-adic properties of these numbers? Well, here's here's an example. But another one is a sort of more general, more general reason where you can try in mathematics is you have an object that that looks complicated. You can try and deform it a little bit, and maybe you'll get to an object that's slightly easier. Uh, and here, what it turns out is that there are many uh, sort of by deforming, I can try defo deforming here means that I I can try to replace a, a modular form with a modular form whose Fourier coefficients are all congruent, modular some high power of a fixed prime. And maybe that will make my life a little bit easier. Um, and if you would try to do this, say instead of doing it in a p-adic topology, if you try to do it in a complex topology, then many um, Many eigenforms simply won't deform, but, but p-adically you can always deform them. So, so this is a technique that was sort of studied, or whose study was initiated in the 60s, I believe. Um, so an early example of a success of this is a theorem due to Ribbit, Maser, and Wiles, which gives you a very strong refinement of this theorem. That it tells you it, it sort of breaks up the class group of this thing and tells you exactly what pieces correspond to the divisibility of what Bernoulli numbers and so on and so forth. So, so how would you try to how would you try to study p divis how to study p divisibility? Well, you can you would try to embed my space. Into some large into some large space of p-adic modular forms that I'm not going to define, right? But you can think of them as a you can th you can think of them as a subset of. I mean, they each have some kind of Fourier expansion like this, or Q expansion. Um, So in some sense, they can. Many of them are rather concrete objects, um, and in particular, they contain anything anything that you can try and get by a limit process, starting things in here for different weights, where you can sort of try to try to. Uh, you can obtain sort of expansions as limits of expansions of objects. So. Inside these, there is which are called overconvergent eigenforms of finite slope. So I'm afraid I'm not going to say anything about finite slope. Simply means that simply means that the the AP is fine is non-zero finite slope. Is the same as AP not being zero. So out of these gadgets. 
one one builds due to a construction of Coleman and Mesa, which was completed by Buzzard, one builds a geometric object curve. So it's a it's a non Archimedean analytic curve. Call the Eigen curve. Um, so, modular form, periodic modular forms also have a notion of a weight, which is far more general gadget than a, than, a, than an integer. Um, so, there is a map. So this this space sort of points. Points correspond. Um, points correspond simply to, or roughly speaking at least, corresponds to to these overconvergent eigenforms of finite slope, or rather their systems of Hecke eigenvalues. And the map down simply takes one of these gadgets to its weight. The weight space is a quite simple thing. It sort of consists consists of. It looks like p minus 1 copies of a unit disk, an open unit disk. You understand it very well. This object is, is rather mysterious, unfortunately. Um, it's a curve, which is basically, we don't know how many components it has. We know some things about components intersecting. We know very little about con components being smooth or anything. This is probably a way too nice picture. But we draw it anyway. So, so my interest is in various properties, sort of both local and global, of the geometry of these of these gadgets. Um, so, in particular, one one question that I'm interested in at the moment is there was there was recent work. which tells you that at least for many of these components <laughs> so many components say look like so let me let me not try and write it down let me just say, say what it means so when, when you approach the sort of the boundary of this open disk Many components start looking like just copies of the, just sort of look like a sort of an infinite number of copies, or rather the whole eigencurve starts looking like an infinite number of copies of this boundary of the unit disk, this kind of annulus. Um, and moreover, on each, on each of these guys, I'm drawing them with a little bit of a slope, the AP, um, the valuation of AP tends to zero on any one of these guys. Um, and so there's a philosophy due to Coleman that this should correspond to, um, that this should be related to trying to glue on points to the eigencurve, which are in characteristic P rather than characteristic zero. Um, 